A screencast is like making a video, only instead of using a camera, you record what's on the screen of your computer. If you have a Mac computer, you probably have all the tools you need built right in to make your own screencasts. I'm going to show you how. First, we need to find a program called QuickTime Player. So we're going to open a Finder window and go to our Applications folder and look inside of our Applications folder for that program called QuickTime Player. And we'll go ahead and open that. Now, QuickTime Player is open, but you don't see anything on the screen. And that's because we need to start a new recording. If you click on the File menu, you see some options here, and one of them is New Screen Recording. Click New Screen Recording, and you see this fun little menu. Before we start our recording, there are a couple of options that you can choose from this little triangle right here. First, you can choose which sound input you want to use, none or the built-in sound system. Uh, pro tip here, if you have the headphones from your cell phone that have a built-in microphone, you can plug them into your Mac and you can probably use those as a microphone. That's what I'm using right now. The other option here is to show mouse clicks in the recording. And that will show a little highlight if you click on something, which is helpful if you're showing or demonstrating how to do something on the computer. The mouse clicks highlight what is being done so that the attention of the viewer is drawn to it. So with that done, we'll go ahead and click the record button. And when we click record, it comes and tells us that we can click once to record the full screen, or we can drag to record only part of the screen. That's if we wanted to show only a certain part of the screen, we could draw a window like this and then click inside it to start recording. For our purposes though, I want to show you how to record the full screen. So I'm gonna hit escape to cancel that and then start another recording. And this time we're going to click once to record the full screen. You'll also notice it says end recording by clicking the stop button in the menu bar. We'll see that in just a minute. Uh, up here is a little stop button, but once you've started recording, you may wonder, okay, now what do I do? And if you don't locate this little menu item before you start recording, it can be kind of confusing. So now we're all set. I'm going to click and we are now recording and making a screencast. So I will go through here and show you how to do what it is I want to show you. I'm just kind of messing around here. Um, actually, I do want to demonstrate one cool feature. Uh, if you have a Mac, you may not know about the zoom feature that's built in that lets you zoom in on parts of the screen so you can see them better. And I'm going to show you how to enable that. So go to the menu, the Apple menu in the upper left-hand corner, go to System Preferences, and then click on Accessibility, which is down here. Under Accessibility, there is a feature called Zoom. And if you check this box right here, that says Use Scroll Gesture with Modifier Key to Zoom, by default, it's the control key. It will let you do something like this. So if I'm going to hold the control key on my keyboard now and then zoom, zoom uh, with the scroll gesture, which is dragging with two fingers by default. But if you have a wheel mouse, it will you can use that as well. And this is what happens. You can zoom in really close on part of the screen. You can then move around and see things. This is nice if you're looking at something really small and you just want to temporarily zoom in on it. If you're displaying something on a projector and want to make it bigger for people temporarily without messing with font sizes and things, it's kind of fun to be able to scroll in and out like that. And QuickTime Player, as it's recording a screencast, uh, making a screen recording, will also record that zoom, so it can be kind of helpful. If you're recording full screen, sometimes it can be hard to see individual elements, especially if the video is played back later at a smaller size. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Stop button on QuickTime Player. And you'll notice that it has popped up a window called Untitled for our video. This is the raw video file that QuickTime Player has made for us, has recorded for us. And it's not very useful for our purposes because we need to get this somewhere like YouTube to be able to let other people view it and watch it. So we're going to export and compress this video that we just made. So I go to the File menu in QuickTime Player and then I choose Export and you'll see you're given a bunch of choices here. These are different resolutions or sizes for the video. 480p basically means it'll be 480 lines or 480 pixels tall. 720p or 1080p are going to make for bigger, higher resolution videos where it's much more clear on the screen what you see, but the video files are going to be bigger and can sometimes take a little bit longer to stream or to play. So it's a trade-off. You can make a higher quality video but it's going to be a much larger file and can sometimes present problems on playback, whereas a smaller video like 480p or optimized for an iPhone or an iPod like that 
uh, size will be much smaller and quicker to load and to show, but can be uh, a little bit harder to see. It will be reduced quality. So for our purposes, we're going to make this 720p. And it's going to come up and ask where we want to save this. I'd like to save my things on the desktop, so I'm just going to call this screencast test and then save the file. I'm actually going to take the space out of that uh, because uploading files to different web services, sometimes they aren't happy when there's a space. One thing you'll see um, is that it is taking a while to chew on this video. This was a relatively short video we made. It was only a couple of minutes long. Um, this work of compression takes this really high quality screen recording that you made and really does a number on it. It crunches it down to make it look good, but fit into a really small file type. Um, if you've ever worked with video before, you know that this step can take a while. So I'm sort of basically uh, vamping and filling time right here until that menu bar gets full. Um, once this is done, you can really do anything you want to with this file. It's going to be compressed down. Um, it's going to be a standard MP4 video file, so you can upload it to YouTube, which I'll show in just a second, or Vimeo or any other service that you have that you would like to use to make a screencast. Um, there are some services out there that are dedicated to, um, to hosting screencasts, and you can use those. Um, one other consideration, uh, as we just saw popping in there, and as we heard the noises, is to disable anything on your computer that you don't want to record. Um, if you're making a screencast, turn off your instant messaging program like I didn't. Uh, turn off Skype and your email program and anything else that's going to pop up or make a noise and show up on the screen that you may not want to show. Okay, now that this is done, we're going to go ahead and close QuickTime Player. And we see here, this is our video file. Uh, the video file itself is about 47 megabytes. Zoom in a little closer, it's closer so you can see that. And for a video file, that's a pretty big. It's a minute and a half long, 47 megabytes. It's not huge, that's about the right size to upload to YouTube or something, but this isn't the kind, you're not gonna be able to make great big long video files and email them around to people. So we're gonna hop over to YouTube and I'm not gonna do the full upload, but this is where you would then take the video that you just made and say, I want to upload this to your service. And then it will upload it. You can fill in your title and information and then publish it as you see fit. So I hope this was an interesting look at the tools that you have on your Mac built in to do screencasting. And I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.